Our second exercise will, will be with the independent samples t-test. Now for this <clears throat> exercise we're using the, the family data set and uh, this data set has information on some cohabitating couples. Some of whom are married and some of whom are unmarried. So here we can see that uh, the number of siblings, these are the number of siblings of the couples. Um, so that is, is recorded here. The number of children that the couples have together uh, is listed there. The number of pets that they own and whether they are married or unmarried. Uh, that would be the, the group. And if we switch the value labels, we can see that that is dichotomously coded such that married is one and unmarried is zero. The researcher whether, wonders whether unmarried partners and married partners have the same number of children, or if one type of cohabitant couple tends to have more children than the other. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, come up with a research question and we'll follow um, one of these formats. So we can either say, is there a difference in the number of children between married and unmarried cohabitating couples? Or we can say, is marriage related to the number of children for cohabitating couples? Um, I think the first one sounds better, so I'll use that. Now I need to add the null and alternate hypotheses. With the last exercise, I used this style, where mu equals mu. So this time I'll use this style. Um, this is mu of one group minus mu of the other group equals zero. Um, and this is actually appropriate in particular because of the phrasing of my question I asked, is there a difference? So let me expand this page so that I can get to the equation button. My hypothesis is that mu minus mu equals zero. Now I'll go in and add the scripts. My null hypothesis is that mu of 1 minus mu of group 2 equals 0. For the alternate hypothesis, mu 1 minus mu 2 is not equal to zero. <clears throat> All right, now I need to run that analysis. In SPSS, I come to the family data set, and I'll go to the analyze menu. Again, we're in compare means, and this is the independent samples t-test. This dialog box looks slightly different. Uh, the test variables box is where I'll put children. I'm testing whether the number of children is different and the grouping variable is marital. We saw earlier that it's dichotomously coded, so it's zero and one. Again, the options don't really give us anything that we need to use, so we'll just click OK. Gives us the descriptives for both groups, um, and then it gives us two rows of output. 
one where equal variances are assumed and one where equal variances are not assumed. In order to know which row to report, we have to look at this Levine's test for equality of variances. SPSS runs Levine, Levine's test, um, and it Levine's test tests the null hypothesis that the variances are equal in both groups. So if this is significant, if we reject that null hypothesis, that would mean that we have to treat the groups as though their variances are unequal. There's two different methods to calculate uh, the independent samples t-test. Um, one relies on the assumption of equal variances and the other does not. So if this test is significant here, then we would have to report the numbers on the bottom row. If this test is non-significant as it is here, we can report the numbers on the top row. So let me go ahead and copy and paste that into my document. Now I need to write up those results. So as I look at these, these results, I see that the Levine's test is non-significant, so I report off of the top row. And it actually is, is kind of interesting because if variances were assumed to be unequal, then my test would be just over the 0.05 alpha level. And if variances are assumed to be equal, then my test is just under the 0.05 alpha level. So really it all hinges on this Levine's test for equality of variance, which ironically is really, really close to the alpha level. So this is a very borderline test here, but we can write it up as though it's significant since according to the letter of the law, we've met all the criteria. Um, in the discussion here, I would probably note how close this is and perhaps suggest in the limitations and implications for future research section that it requires further, that it, uh, requires further study. At any rate, I will use my uh, boilerplate text for when the results are significant and I'll write it up this way. So I've written very simply, on average, married cohabitating couples have more children than unmarried cohabitating couples. And as I write that, I can see that married children have on average 2.2 uh, children and unmarried couples have on average 1.4 children. So that tells me which direction the, the difference goes. Um, so now I need to insert this mean and standard deviation. And I've decided just to go ahead and report this to one decimal place. Um, when we start talking about fractional children, it seems a bit silly to go multiple decimal places of, preci of precision. So now let me fill in the unmarried couples. Now, this tells me that the um, this tells me why the Levine's test was so borderline for equality of variances. If you'll notice, the standard deviation for, for unmarried cohabitating couples is uh, almost twice that of the standard deviation for the married cohabitating couples. So there tends to be more variance among unmarried couples in terms of how many children they have. Now I need to pull in 
the text to report the t-test. So because I'm reporting off of the top line, uh, because equal variances are, are assumed, my degrees of freedom are 48. The T value is negative 2.33 and the P value is 0 0.024. Now, if you note that our T value is negative, which means that group two has a higher mean than group one, uh, this is actually sort of arbitrary whether, um, whether it's positive or negative, depending on where we put which one, uh, which value. Um, And our question doesn't really imply an order. So having a negative just doesn't seem to make sense. So I'll go ahead and report that as the absolute value of the T statistic rather than as uh, a negative T statistic. I'll want to do the same thing with my effect size when I calculate that. All right, so in this case, the observed mean difference was 0 0.8 with a 95% confidence interval of, since I'm doing absolute values, I'll invert those. 0.1 as the lower bound and 1.5 as the upper bound. And now we need to calculate that effect size. So Group 1, 1 1.42, 1.644, 18. This is 2.23, 0 0.808, 32. Okay, so now again, because we're reporting the absolute value, uh, the negative 0.69 we'll just report as 0 0.69. Um, when we look at the guidelines, that's clearly a medium effect. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's quite large enough to say medium to large. That might be overstating it. So I'll leave the text that I copied here as a medium effect. All right? So that's how we do the independent samples t-test. Why don't you go ahead and try the next exercise on your own?